We are going to be palpating the occipital bone. And so we have our person facing in the opposite direction this time because the occipital bone is the back of the skull here. So we're again, we're going to be outlining which bones are kind of articulating and creating some sutures, plus pointing out some of the major landmarks. And we have a lot of posterior neck musculature that's going up and attaching to the occipital bone. So we've just gone through in previous videos that where the parietal bone meets this occipital. But again, I'll just quickly, we're going to roll her head back this direction here. So I'm going to be finding the sagittal suture. I'm going to be walking back, feeling for that suture line to where it meets the occipital bone, which is going to be around this location here. So this would be the lambda location. And then this lambdoid suture is going to be separating where the parietal and the occipital bone meets. So that occipital bone really is this posterior kind of cap aspect here. Okay, so one of the most common landmarks that you will discuss and talk about, which really shows up as a, a central landmark, which helps you identify a lot of C-spine, is going to be what is known as the external occipital protuberance. A lot of people shorten that to EOP. If you're palpating on the back of your head, it's quite a noticeable, obvious bump that's sticking out, and that's kind of an anchoring point for something called the nuchal ligament going down the back of your head. So even from a young age, as you're an infant and you're starting to hold your head up, we're going to have a lot of pressure and pull going onto the back of the occiput and some of these muscles and other structures start to develop. So this should be a pretty easy to find bony landmark. So we need to locate that to be able to identify other structures. So that's why I'm starting here. One of those muscles known as trapezius, that's going to be again one of its common attachments. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slacken her head a little bit by rolling it back. And then I'm going to sink in below that EOP, external occipital protuberance, and walk down the skull. And it's going to be hard to determine, but this is a bony landmark known as the external occipital crest. So this is again for your ligamentum nucate or nuchal ligament. And if you wanted to try and feel that, you would tip the head into capital flexion. So kind of like a tin, chin tuck but don't move the neck forward into flexion. So you're trying to bring that EOP and your cervical seven apart from each other, and you actually create tension straight down the center of this ligament. So that'll pop up, and that's kind of helping you confirm you're in the right location. The next bony landmark that's really common and a multiple muscle attachment is known as the superior nuchal line. So if I find my EOP, I'm gonna go off lateral, and if you can kind of envision a large M shape, this bony landmark goes slightly superior, very lateral, and then it's going to head inferior lateral towards your mastoid process. So right in here, mastoid process right behind the ear. So the superior nuchal line. This should be raised. You should be able to kind of strum your finger back and forth across this bony landmark. Centrally, we have more of a trapezius attachment, so upper traps, but laterally towards that mastoid process, we have muscles like splenius capitis as well as sternocleidomastoid. So if you wanted, you can have the person try to rotate to look over their shoulder on that same side. Good. And I'm starting to feel, in this case, splenius capitis attaching to that more lateral part of that superior nuchal line. Now, as soon as there's something called a superior nuchal line, you probably can guess there's going to be additional lines. So the next one that we're going to look for is once you've identified this superior nuchal line, I'm actually going to drop below it. And again, I need to relax the head back so I can sink in a little bit. Now, this is not going to be an easy palpation, but if you've located the superior nuchal line right below it is a very thick muscle insertion known as semispinalis capitis. And then deep to semispinalis capitis is going to be your inferior nuchal line, which has a similar pathway going from that occipital bone over towards the mastoid. This is the insertion of three of your suboccipital muscles. However, because of how deep it is, it's not going to be an easy palpate like the superior. The third and final line, again, not always referenced in every book, but if I find the superior nuchal line, I'm actually going to go above it for something called supreme or highest nuchal line. 
So on our model right here, I can actually quite easily feel that, but there's a slightly raised area. It is behind where that lambdoid suture would be. So make sure you're not in the exact same location. And this is the, going to be an attachment for a muscle in the scalp known as occipitalis. So you might see this as occipital frontalis. However, this musculature is controlling some of the scalp's movement. So you can, on some individuals, see if they can raise their eyebrows and the scalp would move posteriorly if they're able to contract this occipitalis muscle. Okay, so we have the external occipital protuberance and three nuchal lines for this occipital bone. And there are a few other small bony landmarks, um, but a lot of them are actually internal. So for the most part, we're gonna leave it at that for the occipital bone landmarks.